been a minute as usual um but i have been on booktube for probably a year now um watching booktube and i've kind of always wanted to make videos kind of with similar ideas i guess i kind of wanted to show you around my bookshelf but also it needs to be cleaned <laughs> so that is kind of the first step is I'm gonna kind of take everything out and then kind of show you what books I have so let's get started <laughs> I kind of had these a little bit organized before. The question is now how I want to do this. So I guess I'll start with my really big books. This is a book my mom got me for Christmas one year. It's A Thousand Places to See Before You Die. And it is full of every single country you could ever think of. And it is full of just so many beautiful underrated places that you could go and it's broken up by it's broken up by continent and it's just it's amazing and I love it so much but it is also massive so I always put it on the bottom there trying to decide so I study astrology and the moon and stuff like that and I have a bunch of that stuff put it on one shelf so next book I have is Parker's Astrology. This is probably the biggest astrology book that I think exists on the market currently. And it has every single thing you could ever imagine. It describes all of the houses, it describes all of the signs, moon signs, rising signs, what each sign means per planet. Um, so pretty much everything you could ever imagine. This is Parker's Astrology. It is amazing. Next! I'm gonna put my secret language of astrology. Once again, this is just kind of explaining all of the, and it's like beautiful. Ugh, it's kind of why I bought it, is it's just beautiful. But it's explaining all the signs, all the planets, how they work. So I just like to cross-reference with a bunch of different books. So this is the first astrology book I ever got, thanks to Kathleen Lights here on YouTube. This is the only astrology book you'll ever need and it is amazing this is kind of what i did a lot of my natal charting from um it explains things so in depth it explains aspects it explains degrees and just kind of anything you could ever want to know to start off and i love it love it love it and then i have how to be an astrologer this once again is just explaining how to best do natal charts with the best practice how you decide per person everything like that it is a lot of fun okay and then over here I have some more astrology stuff where did I put the rest oh no where did I put the rest oh it's right here. okay just had to move some stuff around so I have a bunch of other astrology stuff and here's where the fun part comes in because I do not know how I want to do this Okay, well, I'll start with the smaller ones. So I have a crystals book. This just kind of explains to you how crystal healing works or how crystals are used in different things. Also, I use it mostly for what crystal is what. Um, and I have a little crystal collection as well. It's just some self-care stuff for Capricorn, as well as just a little bit more about the sign. I am a Capricorn, so I just love being able to reference this. Next ones are more regular books. This is Queer Cosmos, astrology based on queer individuals. I am queer, so I always thought this was very interesting that an author thought queer astrology was different than regular astrology, so I had to choose it. I had to pick it up and kind of see 
what it was all about. I really haven't gotten into this one yet, but I'm very excited to start. Next, these two kind of go together. This is Inner Witch and Moon Magic. They are having to do with more Wiccan witchcraft, stuff like that. I don't necessarily uh, prescribe to any sort of religion, but I do believe in the universe and how everything is kind of connected. And these two are great for looking at that, especially with the moon and the moon cycles, which is my favorite thing. Next are some of my favorite books. I know these are very controversial, but it is the Zodiac Academy series. I have one, two, and I'm currently on three. I've read these two already. Um, the Zodiac Academy series is about these two girls who are Gemini twins, and they find out that they're Fae and have to go to Solaria in order to help the realm, but also to take back their rightful crown. So I am not a big fantasy person at all, but I love these. The third one as well is called The Reckoning. Um, so we have The Awakening, which is the first, Ruthless Fae, which is the second. And I love these so much. They're so pretty and I just am a big fan. I still have a little more astrology stuff. One is the self-care of Capricorn, which my cousin Emily got for me. You would have seen her on the channel before. She's who I bought the Dan and Phil tickets for. So this is a cute little book that I just love so much. And then my tarot, uh, my tarot, Kauai tarot cards, and then my moonology oracle cards, as I already explained. I love the moon. And so I had to pick this up and then I am a Kauai bitch. So <laughs> I had to pick that up as well. Okay, so next I think I'm going to do my classics. I have quite a few here. I have The Catcher in the Rye, In Cold Blood, and The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I have actually never read any of these. I was supposed to read Great Gatsby in school, never did. I was supposed to read In Cold Blood in school, never did. And then I, we never read Catcher in the Rye in my school, so I'm looking forward to reading all of those. I might actually double stack books. That's what I'm thinking right now. So I'm going to push those a little bit further in the back. Next, I have To Kill a Mockingbird and Lolita. I have read Lolita. It was okay. I gave it like a three, three and a half star. To Kill a Mockingbird, I was supposed to read once again in school. I never did. Um, but this is actually the copy that I had for school. Um, it has my full name on the side, so I'm not going to show you that. But it was a mass market paperback. And so I had to buy a regular paperback because I knew the mass market was going to drive me a little crazy. All right, the next two classics I have are A Clockwork Orange and The Outsiders, both of which I did read in school. I was supposed to, and I did. Um, two of my favorite classics ever. I just reread The Outsider not too long ago. It should be on my Goodreads. Um, still a five star. It holds up, which I was so nervous about rereading it. But A Clockwork Orange I haven't reread, and I still have all my notes and stuff from school, so I'm so curious if I were to read it now, if I would be able to. If you don't know, A Clockwork Orange is written in a language that actually doesn't exist. Um, and it's really, really cool how everything is done. So would highly recommend both of these. All right, next I have some historical books. I have Night. I have The Narrative of a Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave. And I have Number of the Stars. I have not read any of these. I need to. I actually was just thinking the other day that I wanted to read the Frederick Douglass. These are just historical books that I really need to get to. Night I was supposed to read in school and never did. And it's just something that is important to me to look into. The next two books I have are about Columbine. One is called Chain Reaction, which actually is about Rachel Scott who passed during the shooting of Columbine. Um, I actually met her brother and her father. They came to my school to speak and that's actually the first time I learned about Columbine. And then I have the actual book Columbine which goes through every single detail you could ever imagine about the story. And it actually is like really yellowed which I think is so crazy. This is one of the first books I ever read of like my own and it was an experience I will never forget. So that's Columbine. So things I would call modern classics. First, we have Mitch Album. We have Tuesdays with Maury for one day. But these are great books, would highly recommend. They are kind of just about life 
and reflections from people. These are deckled edges and I know hot take but I love deckled edges so it's great. I read Two Days with Maury in school and then for one day I think my sister was supposed to read in school and I don't believe she ever did. Okay next I'm going to put my Riverdale series up here. This is the Riverdale box set. Um, I have read two of these so far the day before and get out of town. Um, they're pretty good. I'm a huge, once again, hot take, I'm a huge, huge, huge Riverdale fan. It is my favorite series to ever exist, um, which I know a lot of people would disagree with, but it is the best. So I had to get, when I saw this, I had to grab it. <laughs> okay, next I think if it will fit, I want to do my Harry Potter series. So it actually has a little bit of a backstory. My aunt was a huge Harry Potter fan. She actually went and got the books on midnight, I believe, for every single release. Um, so she has original copies. She sadly passed away when I was in undergrad. And one of the things I did get to remember her by was her original Harry Potter series. And her first book is like literally falling apart, so I try not to touch it very much. This book series means a lot to me just because they're from her. I've only read the first book of Harry Potter, but I would like to read them all and I just love having her copies. So I have the first, the second, The Chamber of Secrets, the fifth, The Order of the Phoenix, and the sixth, The Half-Blood Prince. So we have a little bit of room left here. Oh, I have another classic here. I have Romeo and Juliet. This edition I love so much. Um, I looked for a Romeo and Juliet edition for so long and I'm so happy I found this one. Let's see, I have Burn After Writing, Wreck This Journals. I'm gonna see if they fit. These are things I've had since I was a kid. Um, Burn After Writing, I got a little bit more recently, but I have Wreck This Journal, Mass, and This Is Not a Book. So I think I am gonna double stack this section. So I have The Last Song by Nicholas Sparks. The Last Song is one of my favorite movies of all time, and once again, this is my aunt's who has passed. Um, I saw it on her bookshelf, and I was like, I have to have that because I've never read the book. And I just love the movie so much. Next, I'm going to put my uh, two memoirs I have. Yes, Please by Amy Poehler and Scrappy Little Nobody from Anna Kendrick. My copy is actually signed. I had an old friend who went and uh, met her and got a, at a book signing and actually got me a copy and I'm still so grateful, even though we don't talk anymore. I'm still so grateful for them for that. Okay, so sadly my <laughs> vlog camera died, um, so I need to charge its extra battery, but I still wanted to continue this video for you guys. Let's see, I think next I'm just going to do some regular fiction that I have. Push by Sapphire. Um, this is the story that then became a movie, which I cannot remember the name of right now. Maybe it was also called Push, but um, I've had this for a really long time. I've never read it. I really need to. Next, I have some mental health books. So I have Speak and Every Day by Devin Levin, Levithan, Levithan, Levithan. And then I also have 13 Reasons Why, which you could argue is a mental health book or not. I think it is. And then finally, I have How to Make Friends with the Dark by Kathleen Glasgow. Um, I have friends that actually got me a paperback copy as well, so I have a few copies of that. I have read 13 Reasons Why and speak out of these, um, but they are important books to me, for sure. I know some people are probably dying that I'm covering the first edition of the Harry Potter books. Next, just two more books. I have Ready Player One and Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I have not read either of these, but I know they're huge book two books. And um, I believe Jesse was who convinced me to get these. Jesse from Jesse the Reader. So I thought I would get some of my own and I still have to read them, but definitely ones I want to. All right, next we have We Are Liars and Family of Liars, both by E. Lockhart. These books are amazing. We Were Liars makes me sob like a little baby. Um, and Family of Liars I didn't like as much, but it is actually the first book I ever tabbed, so it means a lot to me. 
Next one I'm gonna put in is the House of Cerulean Sea. I actually got this out of a little library by my house and I saw it and I have kind of always been curious. I hear a lot about it, or used to hear a lot about it on booktube, so I thought I would grab it and see if I enjoy it. Next, I'm gonna put my Pokemon Adventures manga. Um, I have already read the first one. I just got the second one recently. I'm a huge Pokemon fan, so these are kind of like no-brainers that I had to get. Here's the fun part about my bookshelf. It's also uh, houses all of my Ariana Grande perfume <laughs> boxes. So it's always a fun time trying to figure out how to get these in here. This stack is kind of really hard to show. Um, but it's celebrities and stories that mean a lot to me. Um, we have Billie Eilish down here. We have Allie Burke from Fifth Harmony. We have Miley Cyrus's Miles to Go. We have a bunch of Jonas Brothers and Camp Rock books. And then at the top, we have Stay Strong by Demi Lovato. And I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. It is just a section of my bookshelf that's really important to me. So first, I have two lesbian romances. One is Satisfaction Guaranteed, and one is... One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. I have not read either of these, but I'm really looking forward to. I think they're probably going to be some of the next romances I read. Next is by Anna Huang, Twisted Love and Twisted Games. I have read Twisted Love already. Twisted Games is next on my list to read from this series, and I look forward to it. Twisted Love is about a girl named Ava and a guy named Alex and just kind of their tumultuous relationship. They start out as brother's best friend and Ava is his sister, obviously. And she's kind of that story. Twisted Games, I know, is about one of her friends and her bodyguard, which I'm super excited to get to know. I know a lot of people, the Twisted Games is their favorite from the series. Next, I have The Fine Print and My Dark Vanessa. I read My Dark Vanessa like very early on in its hype. And then the fine print, I'm behind on <laughs> the hype. Um, but I'm very excited to read the fine print for the first time. And My Dark Vanessa, I actually want to read again now that I've read Lolita. When I was reading My Dark Vanessa, I felt like there were just sections I was missing out on due to not reading Lolita yet. Um, My Dark Vanessa is extremely difficult to read. I would highly recommend looking up trigger warnings or if you are at all triggered by sexual assault on page as well as teacher-student relationships in inappropriate age gaps, um, I would recommend to skip this one. But if you are able to handle that, it is extremely heartbreaking, moving, and eye-opening. Next, I'm going to do two that are kind of known to be in tandem. That is Praised by Sarah Kate and Bared to You by Sylvia Day. These are both indie authors and they're both getting into the very adult romance. So yeah, I already read Praise. I've not read Bared to You. Praise was incredible. First five star of the year of like an actual novel. I also gave Heartstopper Volume 3 five stars this year, but would definitely recommend. So next I have my Fifty Shades series, which I know is extremely controversial, um, but this world and this these characters and this series means the entire world to me. Um, Fifty Shades was one of the first books I ever read in high school that was not like assigned to you, and I know you could argue that I was way too young to read it, but it literally meant the world to me and so I still have not read Freed because I never want this world and these people to end. Um, I have saw every movie at midnight. Uh, yeah, so it just means a lot to me and I know that's, like I said, I know it's really controversial. I know there's a lot of bad things about these books. I get it and I know, but it doesn't make me love them any less. Next, I think I'm going to put my kink and aphrodite and bloom series these are both anthologies that are um erotic fiction uh kink i have read aphrodite and bloom i'm like a fourth of the way through um kink was okay um aphrodite and bloom is also okay i don't think i'm a huge anthology person but they're both enjoyable Next are my Katie Robert books, one of my favorite authors. The Desperate Measure series is my favorite series to ever exist, and Electric Idol is my favorite from the Neon God series. Um, 
I need to get the rest of the Wicked Villain series, but Katie Roberts is amazing and I always love her books and I would love to talk about them with anyone <laughs> who also read them. Um, would highly recommend if you like Disney spin-off erotic romances. Next, I hope they fit, but I'm not 100% sure, but it is my Sailor Moon manga series. Um, I love these very, very much as well. Um, this is actually the first manga series I ever read. Sailor Moon and Pokemon are like two of my favorite things since I've been a kid, so they just mean a lot to me. The fifth one is my favorite plot, um, and I haven't read the seventh yet, but yes, would highly recommend. Are they just gonna fit? Oh my god, look at that. How perfect. Here I have my Twisted Tale series. I have the first three, A Whole New World, Once Upon a Dream, and Tale as Old as Time. I have now officially read all these. The next one is the Mulan, which is Reflection. So that's the next one in the series. These are all pretty good. Um, I give them all pretty much four, three and a half, four stars. Um, would recommend if you're a Disney fan. If not, definitely something you can skip. Next is My Heartstopper Volume 1. I have the hardback, so I've not been able to find any more in stores, so I need to buy them online. And I just haven't had the money to do so, to be completely honest. So I just have the original Heartstopper Volume 1, hoping to get the rest soon. And then finally, I have my Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I love this series so much. Um, would highly recommend it if you haven't read it. Starts with Good Girl's Guide to Murder, Good Girl Bad Blood, and my favorite, As Good as Dead. The only person I know that As Good as Dead is also their favorite is Megan from Meg Loves Books. Um, but yeah, would highly recommend these. The only other thing I have down here are mental health workbooks, so CBT Skills to Overwhelm or Anxiety and Cognitive Behavioral Workbook for Depression, as well as Stop Surviving, Start Thriving by Jazz Thornton. Um, these are kind of books I work through in time. I have read this and I would recommend. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put them down here. All right, so I have books up here. I have this shelf and I have this shelf. So first I have How to Make Friends with the Dark, which I already showed you guys. I have in a hardback. This is where it ends. I have my John Green series, or my John Green books, Paper Towns, Fault in Our Stars, Turtles All the Way Down. Then I have my Karen and McManus books, Two Can Keep a Secret, Nothing More to Tell, One of Us is Next, and One of Us is Lying. Over here I have, like I told you, Riverdale is like my favorite series, so my Veronica Lodge Pop. Then I have Call Me By Your Name, Simon and the Homeless Davian's Agenda, Doing It by Hannah Witten, This Book is Gay, Holding Up the Universe, in all the bright places. And then two of the books I'm currently reading is Misfit by Al Kennedy and Breathless by Jennifer Niven. So I have those as well. I just realized while editing this video that the outro actually didn't save. So I'm here to say goodbye. Subscribe if you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments any books that you're reading or anything you have left on your TBR on your shelves. And I'd love to hear from you. Bye guys!